Uh, so now we're moving on to uh, base quality score recalibration, or BQSR. Uh, and uh, we use this process to assign uh, accurate confidence scores to each sequence base, as Yossi alluded to earlier. Uh, and we are here in the preprocessing pipeline. And in our preprocessing pipeline, uh, we've in left in the indel realignment, step, uh, even though we no longer require it for our assembly based callers, haplotype caller and mutec2, just to remind you uh, that uh, if you are uh, using uh, uh, traditional uh, pileup callers, uh, such as unified genotyper, uh, we still recommend that you do indel realignment. Uh, and uh, one thing that has changed for those types of workflows is that indel realignment is coming before base recalibration. Uh, it used to come after. Uh, in our hands, there is not much difference whether it comes before or after. Um, so we are at the last preprocessing step before we go into uh, variant discovery. Why uh, do we need BQSR? Well, uh, real data contains errors uh, due to artifacts of sample preparation, uh, sequencing artifacts, and uh, mapping artifacts. Uh, and the uh, sequencer gives a base quality score that it thinks is confident, but it doesn't capture uh, the, the range of these types of artifacts. And so we want to uh, correct for them because our downstream tools rely on the base qualities to, to weigh uh, the variant calls uh, they make. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we see here a string of uh, the same base in green in this IGB screenshot, and there are uh, errors that are associated with it. Uh, different sequencing technologies come with their own uh, characteristic sequencing artifacts. PacBio, for example, is known to have a one base pair deletion in regions that have these homopolymer runs. Uh, but uh, even our uh, sequencing by synthesis methods, uh, for example, Illumina, uh, have trouble with certain these types of regions and will contain errors. Um, so uh, we actually recommend that you run BQSR, whatever sequencing technology you're using. It should be compatible uh, with uh, all of them. So uh, again, quality scores uh, will be biased. And the amount of bias may be very little, or it may be a lot. Uh, what BQSR is, is like fire insurance. Uh, if something has gone wrong with your sample, it will really save your analysis. So you want to be sure to run it, because you won't know that anything was wrong until after you have run it. Um, so uh, if you have these biases and don't correct for them, uh, we have found that they contribute to bad calls. Uh, so uh, here we are showing an example of bias uh, based on nucleotide context. Uh, and this is one of the uh, things that BQSR looks at. Uh, so here on the x-axis uh, is the uh, two-base or dinucleotide context uh, in which the call was made, uh, the base immediately preceding the call, and then the base of the call uh, in the read. Uh, and here on the y-axis, we are plotting the difference between the empirical base quality and the reported quality. And we're gonna, we're gonna go into what, how we determine empirical quality, uh, but you can see that the range, uh, and Yossi showed this earlier, is around uh, five and minus five. Uh, and what we want is for this range to be tightened uh, where there is no difference between the corrected uh, base quality and the uh, empirical base quality, uh, just like this chart. Um, so, uh, let's uh, get into the details. Uh, so here, uh, now this is a rather complicated slide. I will walk you through it. Uh, these are different sequencing technologies for each column. And there are three plots per sequencing technology. Uh, the top plot is basically a QQ plot where we have empirical quality against reported quality. And in pink, uh, the pink uh, here indicates uh, before recalibration, and the blue indicates after recalibration. And when the pink line is below the blue line, it is, means that uh, the reported quality overestimated uh, the quality of the bases. 
and we want to uh, lower them to correct for them. When the pink line is above the blue line, we have underestimated the base qualities, and we want to uh, increase the base qualities uh, to uh, bring them to the empirical quality. Uh, for the middle uh, row, we have machine cycle. This is the, uh, the order in which the bases are read off the read. Uh, the first base uh, is the first cycle. Uh, the second base is the second cycle, and so on, through the length of your read. Uh, and for paired reads, you have your first of pair and your second of pair reads. Uh, you want to also indicate uh, that because typically the second read uh, that's on the other end of the fragment uh, will be of lower quality overall. Uh, and again, on the y-axis, we are plotting the difference in empirical versus reported quality. Uh, and you can see uh, these different uh, samples from the different sequencing platforms uh, have uh, different patterns of uh, bias that aren't necessarily uh, beholden to that technology, uh, but are uh, just uh, samples we had on hand and that show some uh, characteristic biases that you can pick up. Um, so you can uh, see that for uh, paired end sequencing, can you see the mouse here, sort of? Okay. Um, that we uh, underestimate base qualities at the start of the reads uh, and uh, overestimate them at the end uh, for uh, uh, solid, uh, underestimate them at the end for solid, uh, and uh, for high seek, uh, we have a tendency uh, to uh, uh, overestimate them and then uh, bring them, uh, have better uh, base quality uh, assessments uh, towards the end of the read. And at the bottom, I'm showing again the dinucleotide context uh, for each of these sequencing uh, uh, samples. Uh, and you can see that this pattern can vary differently between all of these samples on these different uh, sequencing platforms. So uh, we identify the error modes in the data uh, using uh, base call features, or what we call covariates. And uh, the default settings for BQSR look at four covariates. Uh, first is the read group sample. We analyze per lane, per sample data, or a read group amount of data. And you'll need at least uh, 100 million bases uh, for BQSR to be effective uh, at this level. Uh, and by virtue of giving the per, uh, tool uh, just a file of uh, read group level BAMs, uh, you have uh, used this covariate. Uh, next, we use the reported base quality score that the sequencer emits. Uh, Third, we use with the position within the read, uh, machine cycle first or second of pair. And uh, finally, we use sequencing context, dye and trinucleotide sequencing context for chemistry effects. Um, so we calculate the error empirically and find patterns in how the error varies with each of these base call features. And so uh, how do we calculate the empirical uh, quality. Uh, well, we make a very big assumption, and this assumption is that any sequence uh, that is a mismatch against the reference is an error, uh, except for in sites that we know uh, have common variation. So we also give uh, the workflow, uh, for example, dbSNP uh, file for humans uh, of known variant sites to mask them uh, from uh, BQSR. Uh, we then keep track of the number of observations and the number of errors uh, as a function of the covariates, uh, which we've relisted here. Uh, and then uh, we uh, get the ratio of the number of reference mismatches over the number of observed bases to get a Fred Squale uh, quality score. And for, uh, are any of you working in uh, non-human genomes? Okay, so if your uh, species does not have a known variance uh, resource, then you can uh, bootstrap this process by calling variance on your data uh, initially without BQSR, 
uh, using that data set to go back to mask the known variant sites uh, and iterating in this manner a few times uh, to get higher quality uh, base calls for your data. Um, if you don't uh, provide known variant sites, the uh, workflow uh, thinks the data is of lower quality, and so it will penalize uh, your downstream calling. So you definitely want to mask sites. And you might be wondering what happens to those novel variants that aren't in uh, the known sites resource. Well, these will be very few uh, compared to the systematic bias that the tool is looking at, and so they should not be, uh, uh, it should not be a problem. So uh, applying recalibration is simple. Uh, so for each base in the read, uh, we look at each covariate is it in a AA dinucleotide context and adjust it by the amount of points we've determined that that uh, context uh, needs adjustment. Is it at the third position? Adjust by this many points. So a particular base uh, in your uh, data could be adjusted at multiple for multiple covariates, it could be boosted by one and uh, penalized or dropped by the other. Uh, and the end result is that we generate exquisitely accurate base substitution uh, and insertion and deletion quality scores, which you will see in the report. Uh, I do have to mention that uh, our tools no longer use insertion and deletion quality scores, uh, so that is something uh, we now drop from uh, the outputs. So uh, this is just an overview of the tools that are involved. And I've taken this opportunity to uh, highlight some of the differences in GTK4 uh, compared to GTK3. Uh, so uh, GTK4, we've told you, is in beta. But uh, that doesn't mean uh, all the tools within the GTK4 are in beta. Some of the tools are actually ready for your use. For example, the tools related to BQSR I have been, we have been using them in our production pipeline since last year, and uh, it's faster than the GTK3 uh, pipeline. Um, so Base Recalibrator is the tool that models the error modes and computes adjustments. Uh, and in GTK4, we have a new tool that uh, allows you to gather scatter tables if you have parallelized your uh, base recalibration uh, over genomic intervals to group them uh, into a single file and this tool is called Gather BQSR Reports, and it's only available in GTK4. Uh, we uh, then apply the recalibration adjustments to uh, the reads in the BAM. And in GTK3, the tool that does this is Print Reads. And in GTK4, the tool that does this is Apply BQSR. Um, and we always do recommend that you make the before and after plots uh, of how your recalibration went with this tool called Analyze Covariates, which is the same tool in uh, both GTKs. So uh, this is the workflow. There are two complementary paths. Uh, and to, do, to get going with your analysis, you only really have to do uh, the left-hand side. For QC and plots, you would additionally do the right-hand uh, workflow. Um, basically, in step one, you take a BAM, run it through base recalibrator, get a recalibration table. And then to apply recalibration, you feed apply BQSR, the recalibration table, and your BAM, and you get a BAM out with uh, recalibrated base qualities. Uh, to produce plots uh, for QC, what you do is you take your initial BAM and the first recalibration table, and you give it to base recalibrator, uh, same tool here in step one and three, and you generate a second recalibration table from that. And to make the plots, you feed the first recalibration table and the second recalibration table to analyze covariates. So uh, here are the uh, commands. Uh, and uh, I've also taken this opportunity to highlight some syntax differences between GTK3 and GTK4. Uh, the command is pretty straightforward. And you're all probably familiar with it. Uh, and so I won't go into all of the details. But notice that we do provide our known sites SNPs and indels resources here. Uh, in GTK4, instead of invoking the jar with Java jar, uh, we call upon a script that invokes Java and the jar. And uh, the convention is to call the script by GTK launch. We no longer have to uh, call the tool with the dash T. Uh, 
you just provide the tool name after GTK launch. Uh, and one of the other syntax, differ syntax differences is that for the output, instead of a dash O that is lowercase, we use a dash O that is uppercase. Um, and there are some other minor differences here and there that are tool specific. For example, to generate the second recalibration table uh, in GTK3, you would use all caps BQSR, uh, but in GTK4, it's all lowercase. And uh, here are the commands to apply recalibration with print reads in GTK3 or apply BQSR in GTK4. Uh, and uh, in GTK3, uh, print reads will by default output these really long tags, uh, uh, BI and BD tags for base insertion and base deletion tags. And you want to disable that because we don't actually use them in our workflows anymore with the dash dash disable indel quals. In GTK4, they are omitted by default. Uh, and one of the things that our production uh, pipeline does is to bin qualities. Uh, and what that means is instead of having uh, different qualities that range from 0 to 60, uh, we ask the tool to group them in bins, four bins in our case, at uh, 10, 20, 30, and 40, uh, so that uh, the complexity of the string for the base quality is reduced and allows for better file compression, greatly improved file compression. Um, there is an option to emit the original quality, the OQ tag, uh, that is now off by default because it increases file size. Uh, but if you want the original quality, you can use this option. Uh, and if you want to uh, recalibrate based on a BAM that has already gone through base recalibration and used the original qualities, then you can ask uh, the tool to use uh, the original qualities. Does that make sense? Okay. Here's an example recalibrated SAM record with the OQ tag. And you can see here in orange at top, right after the reads, is the recalibrated base qualities. And here in the meta information section, for there's the OQ tag uh, and the original base qualities. And uh, it takes up as much space uh, or double the space as your sequence data. Uh, and uh, I will get into uh, some other considerations at the end. Uh, how am I doing on time? I've got five minutes. Um, so to uh, make your QC plots, we have uh, the commands for analyze covariates, and there's not much that has changed between GTK3 and GTK4. Uh, the one thing that you can do is ask the tool to uh, optionally write out the plotting data if you wanted to plot it with your own plotting methods, and there is an option for that. Uh, so the plots will show the effectiveness of recalibration, and you have already seen these from one of the earlier slides. Uh, and uh, I'd like to actually discuss uh, some BQSR options that impact BAM file compression. Remember that BAM is a binary format of SAM. It was uh, utilized to decrease the size of the SAM file. Um, and uh, these options all impact the compression level. Now, BAM compression, uh, there are actually nine levels of BAM compression that you can uh, ask our tools to use. Uh, SAM tools and uh, GTK3 by default use a compression level 5. Uh, but we're finding that uh, for faster uh, compute on BAM files, uh, if you change the BAM file to compression level 1 or 2, uh, our tools can uh, read them and write them much faster. Uh, and now we have a new format called CRAM uh, that is even more compressed than the BAM. And so that is the preferred format for storage. Uh, and so we can allow uh, intermediary files in uh, our analysis to be larger, just for the faster processing. Anyways, um, the uh, binning uh, reduces the file size, and the SQQ option that allows you to bin is, stands for static quantized quals. Uh, our germline production pipeline uses four bins, and these bins, uh, the base qualities are rounded in probability space. So uh, 7 to 12 will round to 10, for example. Uh, and we've already gone through this. And uh, I should note that base qualities that are less than 6 are left untouched. Uh, there are some special uh, ways of handling 
for example, base quality two uh, by our tools, which uh, typically is used to indicate adapter sequences. Uh, and so we want to uh, leave these untouched and, and not recalibrate them. And you can change that setting with uh, another option, uh, preserve Q scores less than. Um, and remember that if you are using GTK3, you should uh, omit or skip uh, emitting indel quality scores, the BI and BD tags, with uh, this option. So that's it for base recalibration. Uh, in the afternoon, we'll start with uh, haplotype caller. Have any questions? 